I would have said that a 50 percent increase in the number of black inmates in a federal penitentiaries across Canada over the past 10 years, at the same time as the number of white inmates is declining, that's a fact, and it's a relevant fact. So I'm not bothered by people keeping track of this stuff. And we can then decide, once we take a look at these facts, if the facts and the trends are relevant. What does bother me is that we don't focus on why these facts are in existence. Why these facts are in existence. Ending up in penitentiary, is, an, is it a natural byproduct, for example, of having black skin? Well, of course not. So the bottom line is then, why uh, do these people end up disproportionately in our federal prisons? We don't even really bother to ask the question. And of course, the reason we don't bother to ask the question is we really don't want to know the answer. But we already know it, because it's really not too complicated. I mean, these same groups have uh, disproportionately large numbers of people who have much lower incomes, disproportionately larger numbers of people who come from dysfunctional families and community life that's not, uh, you know, not in the mainstream, as it were, disproportionately higher numbers of school dropout rates. And we've got basically three approaches. We can, we can, you know, we can ignore it and not bother to ask why and just kind of forget about it and see more and more and more of people from these groups end up in federal penitentiaries and other places they shouldn't be. Or we can admit the problem and kick the can down the road for somebody else to deal with. We're really good at that. And we haven't even got that far with this one. Or we could choose to actually take these facts and decide we're actually going to do something about it. Wouldn't that be novel, eh? We're really good at the one-size-fits-all programs that are kind of meant to apply to people who get in trouble. We're not so good at looking at the particular circumstances of different groups uh, who end up more likely to get in trouble and nip it in the bud before they get there. You don't want to even be asking yourself the question of why are all these people in federal penitentiary, because guess what? By the time you ask the question, they're already there, and their lives are probably, not for sure, but probably ruined. You know, I've said myself in front of the leadership of the black community and the Aboriginal community that they need to do more when they do well at being role models. And, mm-hmm. you know, they don't deliberately turn their backs, but I think sometimes they get busy like busy people do and, and don't say, look, you know what, I should go back and devote a bit of time to helping some other young men, for example, to make sure they know there's a path like the one I took, whatever that is. And if I show up as a white guy, which I do, I go to these communities and I speak to the kids, but it's not the same. I mean, because I they'll look at me and say, well, of course, that's OK for you to say because you're not X, Y and Z. You didn't grow up here. You didn't have this obstacle in front of you. So it's more credible if these people say it. I speak to a lot of college and high school groups about how to make sure your career gets on the right track and so on. And I mean, when I speak to those groups now, by definition, of course, in this uh, GTA of ours, uh, you know, half the faces in the room are not white people like me. Uh, half of them had a different background or more than me growing up. But nonetheless, they're prepared to listen uh, to my advice. And they're glad I'm there to answer their questions as best I can. I mean, I can't answer questions in their shoes, per se, but I can try my best. 